from Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Automation Technology Group, ABB, has commissioned an integrated solar diesel microgrid installation at its 96,000 square meter long meadow facility in Johannesburg. This is the group's first microgrid in South Africa. Mia Breidenbach tells us more. The microgrid makes use of power fed from the national grid and a solar photovoltaic installation. It also makes use of a backup feed from four diesel generator sets. Special Advisor on Energy to the Presidency, Sala Zimu, and ABB Power Grids Division President, Claudia Faschin, inaugurated the microgrid at ABB in June. Zimu said that the microgrid goes beyond innovation. It goes beyond the promises, and to have a, a company as big as ABB investing in South Africa, not only for investing by having a production plant, but also looking at alternative energy is actually a good plus for us as a country. He also stressed the need for innovation and underscored the opportunity for off-grid renewable energy, as it was key to providing electricity. Zimu further suggested the need for energy planners to understand that people follow electricity. This was seen from the population growth and urbanization in South Africa. Before the presentation of the grid, ABB Power Grid's division president Claudia Fashin highlighted the changes in the energy value chain and in the grid. Today, if you look at uh, the overall energy value chain is changing, it's definitely going uh, through a huge transformation. The whole drive of renewables, it's uh, bringing a much higher level of complexity in, in the grids and in the way also the um, energy gets uh, generated. But microgrid is not just about uh, giving access to electricity to uh, those people that do not have access to electricity now. It's also making sure that we provide reliable electricity to people that already had it, but uh, today it's uh, subject to load shedding, it's subject to blackouts, uh, planned or, uh, or unplanned. So it's about basically uh, finding new ways of providing electricity in a faster way, sometimes also in a more economical way, and more and more, and that is what this uh, microgrid technology allows for, is being able to integrate a much higher share of renewables. ABB Grid Automation MD Massimo Danieli also pointed out the changes in the traditional grid and outlined the need for the microgrid at ABB's facility in Longmeadow. We see a transformation of the grid. Uh, traditionally, the grid has been uh, very structured, hierarchical, big power plants, uh, big transmission lines, uh, and then distribution. But uh, we see more and more uh, with the deployment of distributed generation, particularly with uh, the, the renewable generation, that uh, the grid is transformed. You start having a lot of uh, access points uh, uh, where the energy is fed uh, by local solar PVs uh, or by local wind. Uh, and then you, it is consumed much closer to, uh, to where uh, the energy is produced. Um, so the grid is, is, is really in a transformation stage uh, and the way we see it uh, in many countries. We are here in a site uh, where ABB produces uh, various uh, switch gears and other, and other electrical uh, components. Uh, there are more than 1,000 people working here daily. Uh, and uh, so this is a large facility for ABB to supply this kind of equipment in South Africa and other markets. In the past few years, the situation of the reliability of power supply to this site uh, has become a little bit of a challenge. Uh, there are power cuts, uh, they are sometimes scheduled, they are sometimes unscheduled, uh, and you can, as you can imagine, uh, a power cut uh, is in, a, in a facility or a production facility like this um, produces certain uh, 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 bad effects. From a business standpoint, uh, uh, a facility like this requires a uh, highly reliable power supply. The microgrid is designed to ensure uninterrupted power supply. This is to keep the lights on and the factories running during any planned or unplanned power outages on the main grid supply. ABB South Africa MD Leon Fulhun outlined the key features of the microgrid. The microgrid is basically made up of a couple of energy sources. We are connected to the grid and we have also got four diesel generators in the system. But based on us wanting to go more green 
and wanting to employ the microgrid. The microgrid basically incorporates the grid, the four diesel generators, plus we've put in 750 kilowatt solar panels as well as battery storage scheme. The battery storage is have got the capability of maintaining the full load for 20 minutes. That means we would make sure we never without power and even if we switch between power sources, there is always power at the facility. The solution comprises a 1 MVA, 380 kilowatt hour battery package power store and the microgrid plus. ABB's dedicated control system for microgrids. The pastoral grid stabilizing system addresses frequency and voltage fluctuations. The microgrid plus distributed control system manages the supply of power and balances the fossil fuel and renewable energy sources in accordance with the loads. This enables access to utility grade power. A cloud-based remote service system will be deployed for the operations and maintenance of the microgrid. The grid is expected to increase renewable energy use at the Long Meadow facility. It is also expected to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by more than 1,000 tonnes a year and electricity costs by 50%. For Yun further outlined the company's driving forces for installing the microgrid. Firstly, from an economic perspective, we're using the sun to generate electricity and that of course is we don't pay for the sun. So it is just paying for the capital expenditure to get everything installed. And then secondly, it's basically to go green. You know, we've got a target set for ABB internationally, where all our facilities, we want to become more greener in our facilities. And by using renewable power, we're definitely going the green route. For us, microgrids have got a huge potential in not only South Africa, but in Africa. And really there's two types of microgrids. The one is for installations like what we're seeing here today, basically for, for buildings in industry and mines and things like that where there is a shortage of power. And the second one is for rural electrification that is desperately needed on the African continent. For Yun highlighted the need for access to reliable and sustainable energy systems. He noted that about 24% of people in sub-Saharan Africa had access to electricity, while only 28 gigawatts of electricity was installed in the region, excluding South Africa. Further, about 25% of the countries in sub-Saharan Africa faced rolling blackouts, some of the countries daily. Other challenges included power tariffs that were on average 13 US cents per kilowatt hour. There's a lot that we need to do to make sure Africa has got energy and power and without power there's no economic growth so it is our responsibility to make sure these things happen that's Kriba media's real economy reports join us again next week for more news and insights into south africa's real economy